Maria, and today we are going to answer the question, what is malware? Malware comes in various forms and with different security threat levels. Hackers use them to intercept devices, data breaches, destroying entire businesses, causing severe monetary damages, and even destroying entire companies. In this video, we will tell you what you need to know about malware, how it works, and the various types of malware that exist. But before we get too far, I want to let you know that there will be links to more resources in the video's description. And remember, subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications for future helpful content. Now, what is malware? Malware, short for malicious software, is any software that damages or gains unauthorized access to other users' devices, websites, or networks, primarily for sinister purposes, such as data breaches, identity theft, espionage, etc. Malware can disrupt your service, delete your files, lock you out of your system, steal your most personal and confidential information, turn your device into a zombie, and even bring down entire networks and websites. Given the exponential growth of websites, e-commerce solutions, and web apps, cyber criminals have countless opportunities to carry out their malicious schemes and take advantage of any possible vulnerability. Website malware specifically attacks websites and servers. They're usually developed to bypass the website or server's security defenses, or through untrusted third-party software, and get unauthorized access without being detected. Website malware examples include DDoS attacks, malicious redirects, and spam content. Malware is often distributed through social engineering attacks. Social engineering describes a wide variety of malicious cyber attacks. The attacker relies mainly on tricking users into giving away sensitive information or access to their devices. Phishing is the most popular social engineering attack used by cyber criminals to spread malware, usually through emails. You can get infected by malware when you download a free software program that comes with additional third-party applications in which one of them could contain malware. Many people fall victim to this kind of malware attack because they forget to uncheck the installation of these additional apps. Peer-to-peer -peer file sharing protocols, such as torrents, are among the top methods cyber criminals use to distribute malware. Attackers can quickly spread their malicious codes through files shared via P2P, infecting as many networks and systems as possible. Because getting free stuff is always an attractive option, it usually comes at a high price. Freeware downloaded from unknown or untrusted sources is often infected with malware that can damage your system and compromise your data. Homogeneity can be a sitting duck for malware attacks. Malware can rapidly spread through systems connected to the same network and running the same operating system. If one device gets infected, chances are the entire network has been compromised. It's important to know your enemy to learn how to get rid of malware and protect your computer, website, or server. These are the most common types of malware you should know about. Viruses are the most visible and common types of malware. Viruses can replicate themselves, but they also need human action to carry out the damage. Damages caused by viruses include corrupting data files, shutting down your system, or stealing confidential information if it's inside a network. Viruses can also launch other cyber attacks such as DDoS attacks or even ransomware attacks. The infected file, website, or app must be running for the virus to awaken and start operating. Otherwise, it will remain dormant until the victim user runs it. Most viruses crawl up and hide in common file extensions like .exe or .com. Even WordPress websites can be infected if a user with access to the dashboard utilizes an infected device. Macro viruses target software rather than operating systems in the same macro language as the software it's targeting to infect, such as Microsoft Word and Excel. As a result, this type of virus can infect any operating system leading to severe security risks for your organization. Macro viruses can spread through phishing emails, downloads from infected networks, malicious P2P services, or infected portable storage devices. You've probably heard of the terrifying ransomware attacks that are threatening governments, individuals, and organizations. 
but perhaps you aren't sure what exactly ransomware is and how it works. In simple words, ransomware hijacks the target victim's device or website, denying them access to their files until they pay a ransom to get the decryption key, although it's not guaranteed if you pay. Here are some examples of ransomware variants. ReOK is a type of ransomware that encrypts files of the target system. This ransomware variant targets enterprises and organizations rather than individuals that use Microsoft OS. ReOK is expensive as the group behind it demands ransoms of over 1 million in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. LockBit is a ransom as a service variant of ransomware that attacks and rapidly encrypts data of large organizations before being detected by security systems and IT teams. When the ransom is paid, the LockBit gang splits the earnings with the affiliate directing the attack. As a ransom as a service malware, the LockBit gang delivers the malware through affiliate services. Once it infects one host, it scans the network. It can quickly propagate to other devices using protocols associated with Windows systems, making it very difficult to be identified as a threat. As the name implies, WordPress ransomware targets WordPress websites and spreads through them in demand of a ransom. The bigger the WordPress website, the more it attracts ransomware cybercriminals. A computer worm is a nasty, self-contained type of malware that's a nightmare to fight due to its rapid spreading capability. The first computer worm, the Morris worm, was created in 1988 to highlight network weaknesses by exploiting email protocol vulnerabilities. Like a virus, a worm can self-replicate. But unlike a virus, a worm doesn't require any human intervention, a file, or a host program to spread from one device to another on a network and cause havoc. Worms occupy entire systems and devour disk space, bandwidth, memory, modify or delete files, lock you out of folders, or even install other malicious software and steal data. Cyber attackers usually design worms to install backdoor software programs to access the victim's files. A worm takes advantage of the target system's vulnerabilities to spread like wildfire from one device to another through LAN, email attachments, instant messages, malicious links, removable storage drives, torrents, or even file sharing platforms. Trojan Horse, or simply Trojan, is a malware program that disguises itself as legitimate software to give cyber attackers access to the user's systems. The term is derived from the ancient Greek story of the wooden horse presented as a gift to invade the city of Troy. Trojans are easy to write and spread, making them challenging to defend. Trojan can be disguised as a website, media file, or any software program that attracts your attention to install it on your device. It can even look like an antivirus program warning you that your device is infected and urges you to run a program to clean it up. Trojans can also appear as legitimate websites or emails with infected links. Unlike a computer virus, a Trojan doesn't replicate itself. Its mission is to open a doorway to hackers and scammers to steal your information, such as passwords, IP addresses, and banking details. Trojan malware will lurk in the infected system until the victim executes it. A remote access Trojan is a malicious tool invented by cyber criminal developers to get full access and remote control over the victim's device, such as file access, network remote access, and keyboard and mouse control. Remote access Trojans allow an attacker to bypass common firewalls and authentication systems to browse your device's files and apps silently. Gootloader targets Google and WordPress users. It's a member of the GootKit malware family, a complex type Type of banking malware that can steal data from the victim's browser and is used to spread malicious codes like ransomware. Gootloader is a JavaScript-based malicious framework that was chiefly used to distribute GootKit malware. However, it's been revamped and broadened its payloads to lap over GootKit and go into Node.js-based malware, causing SEO poisoning. The new Gootloader malware can trick Google into treating infected websites as trusted, including top-ranked Google and WordPress sites. So how is that even possible? Gootloader attackers first target numerous websites and maintain them on a network of around 400 servers. After that, they change those websites' CMS to use specific SEO terms and tactics to appear in Google's top search results to lure more victims. When it comes to WordPress websites, Gootloader attacks by injecting lines of code onto the file of a website's page. 
On execution, these lines of code run a specific command to force the infected website to download a ton of pages with fake content as a decoy. At the same time, the attacker carries out its malicious scheme undetected. If ransomware is bad, fileless malware is even worse. As its name suggests, fileless malware is a sinister type of stealth attack that doesn't need to be stored in a file or installed directly on a device through any software. Instead, fileless malware goes straight into memory and starts executing codes or extracting data without noticing, making it extremely difficult to trace and remove even by an antivirus. Fileless malware attacks target their victims through social engineering methods. Here are some fileless methods. When you click on spam email, malicious downloads, or infected websites, you allow the malware to be loaded to your device's memory, opening a door for attackers to load codes through scripts that can steal your sensitive data. This type of fileless malware remotely infects trusted operating system software, such as Microsoft PowerShell and Windows Management Instrumentation. This malware works by injecting malicious code into the Windows registry. It often goes undetected because it evades file scanning by targeting the computer's registry to store its configuration data. Spyware installs on your computer without your consent or knowledge. It accesses browsing habits, internet activities, keystrokes, pins, passwords, financial information, and much more. It's not restricted to computers only. Any device you use connected to the internet is vulnerable to this type of malware, even smartphones. This information gathered is then forwarded, again without your consent or knowledge, to the perpetrator who can use it to sell to third parties. Spyware on its own is not harmful to your computer. However, the collection and theft of your information is the primary concern. The presence of spyware also indicates that you have a weakness in your device's security. The damages caused by spyware ranges from something as simple as your information being sold to advertisers all the way to complete identity theft. Cyber criminals then use it to gain sensitive information from these targets' devices. Adware is slightly similar to spyware as it also collects information such as browsing activities. Still, it doesn't keep track of keystrokes, and its only purpose is tailoring advertisements for you. However, some adware can be more aggressive to the extent of even changing your browser settings, search engine preferences, and more. Some adware is less intrusive and asks your permission before collecting the information. Then again, once the information is gathered, it can later be sold to other advertisers without your consent. Malvertising is when the cyber criminal hides the malware with a legitimate ad. In this case, the attacker pays money to include an ad on a legitimate website. Once you click the ad, either you're redirected to a malicious website or the malware is automatically installed on your computer. In some cases, the malware embedded in the ads may be automatically executed without you even clicking the ad. It's referred to as a drive-by download. Some cyber criminals could even infiltrate legitimate and large ad networks responsible for delivering ads to several large, well-known websites. That places all their victims at risk. A keylogger is a type of malware that monitors the infected user's activity online. However, keyloggers have a legitimate use in some cases. For example, some businesses use them to keep track of their employees' activities and some parents monitor their children's online behavior. In other cases, cyber criminals use keyloggers to steal passwords, financial data, or sensitive information. Cyber criminals use phishing, social engineering, or malicious downloads to introduce keyloggers into your system. Bots are software applications that are typically controlled remotely and can perform tasks on command. They can have legitimate uses, such as indexing search engines. Still, they can also be used maliciously by taking the form of self-multiplying malware that is connected back to a central server. Bots usually operate in large numbers, collectively referred to as a network of bots or botnets. These are used when launching remotely controlled floods of attacks, such as DDoS attacks. A rootkit is considered one of the most dangerous malware. It's a backdoor program that allows a cyber criminal to gain full access and control the infected device, including administrative privileges. The infiltrator can then spy on the targeted device, change its configurations, steal sensitive data, and pretty much anything else. All this is done remotely. 
Rootkit usually injects into applications, kernels, hypervisors, or firmware. Rootkits can spread through phishing, malicious attachments, malicious downloads, and shared drives that are compromised. In addition, rootkits can hide other malware such as key loggers. SQL injection is one of the top database attacks and is still a severe concern for developers since its discovery in 1998. SQL injection occurs when attackers exploit vulnerabilities in an application's code and inject a malicious SQL query into any input fields found on the target's website, such as login fields, contact form, site search bar, and comment section. Successful SQLI attacks give hackers the ability to gain access to sensitive data, recover system files, execute admin tasks on your website's database, and modify database information. They can even issue and execute commands to the core database of the operating system. Do you have any other questions about malware? Ask us in the comments section. An unsecured website puts your customers and reputation at risk. With Kinsta's Cloudflare integration, all the security features you need are built right into your plan at no additional cost. That's a monthly savings of around $200 per site. Learn more about these benefits, including DDoS protection, a more secure firewall, and more at kinsta.com forward slash Cloudflare dash integration. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more tutorials, explainers, and helpful content like this.